Hello, this is Mommy Girl Free Grace Lady. I'm here to talk about something in the Bible to um, friends of mine, ladies, who are interested. The Bible says in Isaiah 29 20, for the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Isaiah 29 20. And Revelation 12:11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Revelation 12:11. Today I would like to talk about grace, and how grace helps in the time of need. I found that, well, first I'd like to say that this study is not in any way exhaustive. I'm just touching the surface. And Lord, we just ask you that you would help me to speak what you want me to talk about and how you want me to say it. And help me to be understood and let your spirit and your word be understood by everyone who hears. Hebrews 4.14 4, says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest and high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, from reading the scriptures, going through the scriptures, I've found that grace is not something that just started in the New Testament. Grace started before the world began. Because the Bible says that the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. God had already planned a great, merciful, and gracious provision to provide for man's needs because he knew what would happen and he knew what we would need. And he provided for that way in advance. When he created the world, the earth, the stars, everything he created was by his grace. <clears throat> God is the God of grace and all comfort. He's the God of grace that created this planet. And he caused all of the, the, the light and the air and the water and the birds and the creatures and the plants and the trees as provision, as a habitat for man to live. And all of that was by his grace. So I want you to think that whenever you need something, it's grace that helps in time of need. It's grace that provides your needs. The need of salvation and eternal life or everlasting life um, is well provided for. But so is everything else for mankind. Bible says that God um, causes the rain to fall 
on the evil and the good. He has mercy on the just and the unjust. So the very fact that we're here and we're alive and we're breathing and we're living and everything is the sun, you know, in the morning we see the sun and the stars at night. All these things are from his rich wisdom and grace and mercy. Okay. James says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So we see that it says, He giveth grace to the humble. God is gracious to us when we pray. And we don't want to pray proud, you know, in our arrogance, like the man who said, God, I thank you that I'm not like this other guy over here who's a sinner. I do this, I tithe, I, I do all these wonderful things. He's not the one that went away forgiven or justified. It was the man who was humble. He realized that God was God and he was a sinner. And that man went home justified, the humble man. The, the man with pride, he was not, he did not put himself in the position to receive much grace at all. However, the very fact that he still live, he was still living and breathing and walking around shows God's mercy and grace. And it said, He giveth more grace. That means however much grace you need, there's plenty and I think of the um, feeding the 5,000. When Jesus fed the, the multitudes, there was always plenty left over. It wasn't, um, you know, people scrambling for the last piece. They, 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 Jesus said, take up the fragments that nothing be lost. He didn't want it to go to waste, but he wanted people to have plenty. God is plentiful. He plentifully supplies the grace that we need in our lives. Uh, Romans 5.16 says, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. 
Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That is, sin hath, hath reigned unto death, even so grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So you can't out sin God's grace. You can't come to the end of God's provision. He is an abundant supplier of super abounding grace. There's always going to be plenty left over. He's never going to run dry. He's never going to say, oh, I just ran out. He's always going to have as much and more than what we need. And that's one reason we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Because when we come boldly to the throne of grace, we're showing our confidence in Him and His promises that He, he promised to provide. He promised to supply the grace to help in time of need. And all of mankind's needs are met through grace. Even in the Old Testament, like I said, in the Old Testament, grace was there. Um, the gospel is the gospel of grace. But that's the same gospel as in Genesis 3.15, which God said, And I will put enmity, that's that word enmity, remember we talked about the war, enmity, those who love the world are at enmity with God. He said, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That is the gospel. This is what Adam and Eve had to believe on, and they did believe on him. Um, of course, when everything turned and they were sh ashamed and everything changed, they realized, wow, God was right. We were wrong. And of course, when he says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it's talking about the Messiah it's talking about the Christ it's talking about the anointed one the one who would come from the seed of the woman even though women don't have seed and from the seed of uh, would destroy the seed of the serpent even though the serpent doesn't have seed what is he talking about? He's talking about the woman, and of course they didn't know this yet, but the woman was going to have a pure and holy, sinless Son of God be the seed. And Satan's seed are the children of this world who fight God and who are at war with God and who love the world. But it says, It shall bruise thy head. Okay, that means that if you if you get a a wound in your head, it's usually fatal. And it shall bruise thou shalt and thou shalt bruise his heel, meaning Jesus on the cross suffered tremendously. But in comparison to what it's going to do to Satan, it was just as if Jesus' heel was bruised. 
big difference. But this is grace. This is the gospel. This is in the very beginning. God speaking of the, the anointed one that would deliver mankind from the serpent, from sin, from death, from destruction. So, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So grace wins, grace reigns, um, sin and death are defeated by the power of God. Okay, this doesn't seem like it has anything to do with what I'm talking about, but just wait and see. Acts 27, 17 says, Which they, or which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake, the, strake sail, and so were driven. And, being, and we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day we lighten the ship. Okay. Paul is on a perilous journey to Rome. And um, he said, hey guys, let's, let's, not, let's not go there. I have the feeling this is not going to be a good trip. But they didn't listen to him because he's not a sailor and all that. Um, so, once in verse 17, it says, When they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship. Now, this word, helps, is... Boyathia, Boyathia. Um, it means to aid, specifically a rope or a chain for frapping a vessel. Help, help. Now there's one other time this word is used in the New Testament. Guess where that is? Let's look up the word undergird for a minute. undergird helps undergirding the ship remember that to gird under that is frap a vessel with cables across the keel side and deck undergirt undergird so we've got this ship that is being tossed with the waves that's being, they're being overwhelmed through these storms. And the men who, the sailors know what to do. What do they do? They take whatever uh, utility or whatever materials they, they used for that day um, to wrap the ship to undergird it, to keep it together, to keep it from falling apart. They wanted to make sure that they didn't lose the ship, at least till they could get to land. Okay. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now if we go here to the interlinear and we look up grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace 
to help in time of need. This word, this phrase, to help, is the same word that's talking about wrapping up or keeping the vessel from falling apart in the storm. So it says, Strong's in the following manner, help. Strong's. From 998, aid, especially a rope or chain for frapping a vessel. Help. So grace, one way, grace helps in the time of need. When we go to God, he's got plenty of grace. Remember, he's got a super abounding grace. So if we need forgiveness, if we need healing, if we need provision, whatever it is we need, we can weather a storm in life and we'll be miraculously able to withstand uh, the trials that we're going through because grace helps us. It holds us together. It provides our needs. It keeps us from being destroyed through the things that we go through. Here, see? Um, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship. And let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace we may find, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Same word. Undergirding. I want you to see this. Okay. I don't know if you know about this website. It's called Online Etymology Dictionary. And it's E T Y M O N L I N E dot com. Etymology Online. Etym Online. Looking up the word frap, it's a verb that means to smite. Um, in French, to hit. But then down here it says, or rap, but then down here it says, the nautical sense of bind tightly is from the 1540s related frap, frapped. So you're talking about holding this vessel together. And one more. Got dictionary.com says frap. Verb used with object. Frapped, frapping, nautical. To bind or wrap tightly with ropes or chains. So my point is we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the word of God. Because we trust him. And what happens when we do that? We find grace to help in time of need. Okay. We find we come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Whatever we need, even if we don't understand what we need, we can tell God, I don't know what's going on with me. I can't figure out what to do in this situation. Help me. That's all we have to do. As long as we come in confidence, in faith, that he will answer us because we have the blood of Jesus that has cleansed us and continues to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
and we come in his name, in the name of Jesus. And when he sees us, he sees his son. And when we're believing him, and we're believing that, we can be bold. And we can come to him, we can say, I have this need, I have this habit, I have this problem, I have this obstacle. I need you, God. I need your help. Help me by your grace, by your mercy. And he will, he will abundantly provide for whatever it is you need. Even if you don't know what you need, God knows. And he will go in to whatever situation or problem and he will help you to uh, bear it, and he will help you to come through victorious, because he gives us the victory. We don't, we don't give ourselves the victory. Well, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time, and I ask you that this would help someone out there, that they would understand that your provision is super abundant, abundant, abounding grace and mercy for whatever we need. And that you will always hear us and answer us and provide for us. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.